What's up, well that's good fam, y'all. I am so excited for today. I'm geeking out because we have thrown out there a lot of times on social media, who do y'all want in the podcast? And every single time, without fail, we have so many people say, Bethany Hamilton, Bethany Hamilton. Well, here's the thing about Bethany Hamilton. She's awesome. She's so cool. But I'm like, how do I get Bethany Hamilton on the podcast? Well, we got her on the podcast. And let me just tell you, I mean, I know she's no stranger to any of you guys, but listen to some of these things that this girl has done. She's so cool. She was recently introduced to this into the Surfers Hall of Fame and deemed by Sports Pro Media as one of the most marketable athletes. Bethany Hamilton is a wife, mother, a professional surfer from Hawaii. She also had the movie about her soul surfer, which I'm sure so many of you guys saw. She's known for surviving a traumatic shark accident whenever she was only 13 years old. She lost her arm, but this girl did not let that stop her. She got back up. She continued to surf, and she's still surfing professionally, and she's about to have her fourth baby. Y'all, this girl is just so cool. She has so many different things going on. She has a new Ohana Experience Mentorship um, where she helps just so many girls. She helps moms and daughters. This girl is just like doing so many great things. I'm sure I could sit here for a lot longer and explain to you how awesome she is, but I'm just going to let her do the talking. I am so excited today to have Bethany Hamilton on the podcast. Bethany, thank you for finally being on the Willis Go podcast. We are so excited that you're here. Thank you, Sadie. So glad to be here. Yes, this is awesome. And I already complimented your epic background. It's just so Hawaii of you. And I love it. Thanks. Well, <laughs> Hawaii is pretty awesome. I mean, this is hardly doing it justice because it's absolutely beautiful out here. But. <laughs> it is. I had the uh, pleasure of going on vacation last year to where you live and we just miss each other by like a day of travel but it really is gorgeous your backyard is beautiful <laughs> oh, yes. so pretty well look I, I can't wait to get into the conversation but I gotta ask you the same question that I ask everybody who comes on the well let's go podcast to start and that is a big question what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given Bethany Okay, so I I got a little bird bird's ear <laughs> on this question, and I honestly I don't really have a single piece of advice, but I I wanted to just share what's been going through my mind lately. It's good, and I'm very much a cherry picker. So I cherry pick off people. There's so many people that have such amazing qualities out there, but maybe other aspects of their life, I'm like oh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of like. <laughs> how I approach the world is like there's people that have certain traits that are amazing and I learn from that and then I kind of try to really look at them from a whole picture and be like well some aspects of their life I might not as um relate to as much so to say but I really love the um quote from Mother Teresa if you want to change the world go and love your family yes and Lately, I just feel like you can scroll your social media feed, you can look at your news feed and just be completely overwhelmed and just kind of like, what is going on? We live in this time where you're just bombarded with so much like chaos and information um, every time you pick up your device. And so mm -hmm. instead of like worrying about all the, the things of the world, like First of all, looking to God, but then second of all, like loving what you can and doing what you can. And for me, in my season, you know, I'm a mom of three boys and I have one on the way. So, <laughs> yeah, and I have an amazing husband. And I'm like, first of all, like love my husband because I want to have an amazing marriage. And that's what's going to love my children even more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just being able to have that beautiful bond. And then mm -hmm. two, loving my children and just being present with them. And respecting and honoring my mother and my father and everyone I share life with. So maybe you're not a mom or dad, but you can still love your people well and just put your focus on them and like, put the scrolling down and go and just like be a good friend, daughter, brother, sister, um, whatever it may be. It's great. Gosh, that is such good advice. Honestly, my mom actually has that quote in her bathroom. And I always have, I love seeing that in our house and knowing that that's something that my mom looks at every day because I see her do that. 
And she really is like changing the world, but that really does start in her own home and the way that she loves us and the way that she's cared for us. And and in the same way, it makes you as a daughter want to love her more and want to be more intentional with that. And so it's so true, like loving your family just goes such a long way. And I think we can get so distracted by everyone out there in the world that we miss the people right in front of us, that we miss the people in our home, you know, in our car, at our workspace. And so, gosh, it's just such good advice. Um, Speaking of your family growing, congratulations, by the way. That is just uh, so, so, so exciting. And I loved your little post of y'all all all on the little surfboard. It was so cute. Um, And I love this part of your caption where you said, we pursue so many things in life, but what if we pursue what is right in front of us, the beautiful blessing of family, which is so much of what you just talked about. And uh, wanted to ask you about that. That was literally my first question. So it's cool that you led into that just with you've done so many things. You continue to do so many things. You are running a lot of things right now at the current moment. But at the same time, you do such a good job at putting family first. And so, you know, we kind of live in this culture where I think that this underlying tone for young people, it's like, don't pursue a family, you know, don't pursue marriage, don't pursue a family, because that can come later, like right now, like pursue your dreams, your things. And not that there's anything wrong with pursuing your dreams, or there's nothing wrong with working hard towards things. But at the same time, I do think that in in some of that messaging, we've lost the value of how important family really is. And so for you, what have you seen just from the fruit of pursuing family alongside of the pursuing your dreams at the same time? Yeah, I know. I'm doing a lot of different things at the moment. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm doing too much. (laughs) But at the same time, I definitely put my family first. And I will say, if you're listening and you hope to have a family one day, um, it's easier when you're younger. Like, I swear, I can't imagine doing this when I'm like 35, 37, (laughs) because most people are starting their families so late in life now. Mm So, you know, don't be afraid because I was afraid when I first got pregnant at 25 and I was hoping to wait till I was like 27 or eight. Mm -hmm. And, but I got pregnant and I was like, okay, God, this is your plan. I'm running with it. And it took me a little while to warm up to it though. And then once I held my baby in my arms, I was like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced on the whole earth. And I have done a lot of amazing rad things. I've traveled the world. I've like rocked it in professional surfing. I've like gotten awards in Hollywood and, you know, I made movies on my life. So it's like, I'm coming from a place where I've done a lot of really rad things, but I can hands down say that welcoming my own child into the world and becoming a mom is the most beautiful, fun, adventurous thing you can do. And yeah, of course it's hard because I think most relationships tend to be pretty hard because we're human or not perfect. And you have to learn to like work with the different differences and whatnot. But um, yeah, for me, balance, like I think life is a continual balance Mm -hmm. and we're always going to be trying to find our flow and our balance. And, you know, sometimes I'll go a month without hanging out with my mom, for example. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to stop and go hang with my mom. Yeah. Um, now she lives in my backyard. So I at least see her all the time. We have a little family compound. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I think it's just kind of like you listen to your gut. Like, you know, if you're loving your people well, and you know, you have that feeling, or at least I do, I have this feeling of like, oh my gosh, my four-year-old seems a little like dysregulated and a little off. Like, I think he just needs some quality mama time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes now like I have three children. So it's like this little balancing act with each of them. Um, But yeah, I just, to me, my family is the most important thing. And I do a lot of rad things, but if they're not content and happy and in a like healthy place, then I'm like letting, letting down like the most important gift and job that God has given me. And so so 
I just try to always remember that and like recheck in, reevaluate. And, um, you know, some days I'll work more than others. And then I'll plan a few days where it's like just mama and the boys. We're yeah. running hard. We're surfing, playing, going to the park, piano, whatever, whatever it is that we got going on in the day. But it's, awesome. it's like my eyes are on them. And also I just try to make sure I like look them in the eye, give them hugs and just like, yeah, know that they That's let good. them be seen. That's so good. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen that we love a good dress-up party. We had a karaoke party last year for Christian and I's birthday. We have all kinds of fun things where we all dress up. Even my sister's birthday, we all dress up like my sister. So pretty funny, and we have tons of pictures to prove all of our hilarious dress-up days. My family loves to dress up in crazy costumes. We have so many pictures, and that is why we love Aura Frame so much. So this year, you can turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. This is so cool, y'all. You can preload the frame with personalized messages and memories that will appear as soon as your mom plugs in her frame, and it's so easy to set up. Name the best digital photo frame by Wire Cutter and select it as one of Oprah's favorite things, which I love all of Oprah's favorite things. Aura frames are guaranteed to make mom or grandma smile. If you're not familiar, an Aura frame basically brings all your photos and videos together in one beautiful high-resolution display where your mom can really enjoy them. They won't get buried in a bunch of group texts or on social media. And what I really love is that you can upload unlimited pics and videos for free from literally anywhere in the world you are just with Wi-Fi connection is all you need and the Aura app. And even better, there are no fees at all ever. So you can be, you know, on a trip and upload it and your mom can see it. I love giving moms great gifts. It honestly is like the most important person to give a great gift to and Aura frames are always a great gift and very special. Every frame comes in a premium gift box and it only takes two minutes to set up. So even if you're giving it to someone who's not super tech savvy, they'll be just fine. Plus you can invite the whole family to add to the frame from wherever. I think probably my favorite part about this is that you can continue to upload photos from anywhere you are. And so we travel a lot. So it's really nice to just be on the road and have you know the app and wi-fi upload some pictures and know that our family's getting to see those i think it's pretty cool it's like social media but like just for your family and just crafted for your mom so it's really really awesome and right now aura has a great deal for mother's day listeners can visit auraframes.com get up to 30 dollars off on their best-selling frames that's aura a u r a frames.com Plus, listeners can get free shipping with the code WOE at checkout. This deal is going to end on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. We had um, Dr. Amen on the podcast a couple months ago, and he's just an incredible, he studied the brain and just a really incredible doctor. And we were talking about mom guilt, and it was so good because he was talking about being an intentional mom and he was talking about not raising kids from a place of guilt because then you will raise entitled and confused children but really raising kids out of confidence and so if you're a working mom like don't go home and feel guilty and then just give them everything that they want but go home and be intentional and he talked about how like 20 minutes of quality time every day is like really goes such a long way it makes them know how valued they are how loved they are And um, it was just, it was really just great advice. And just over the past few months, seeing that with Honey, obviously it's been more time than just 20 minutes with her, but like 20 minutes of like, what do you want to do, hon? Do you want to go see the horses? Do you want to go on a walk? Do you want to go pick some flowers? Do you want to go? She loves to just sit in my car and listen to her favorite music, which happens to be the Frozen soundtrack. So let's just go (laughs) sit in my car and listen to Frozen. I mean, we jam out to some Frozen. Um, And it's just like that time has been so special to me. It's something that I look forward to every day. It's something that, you know, she's only almost two, so I don't know that she knows to look forward to it, but it makes her excited. It brings her so much joy. And so it's so true. And, and you're so right about that. You can be doing all the rad things in the world, all the cool things are crushing it. But if your family at home is not, um, if, if that's shaky, like you're shaky, you know, I, I know that to be true. And so it's kind of true what Mother Teresa said, but also I think it's actually really vital when she said that that, that has to be done first, because if you it's, it's not really worth it to go and change the whole world if your family has to, like, suffer, take the back burner. You know, I think changing the life of your family 
and then going out and changing the world is really when the fruit comes in fullness, you know? It's whenever you really yeah. feel that fulfillment. And that makes me think, too, is, like, some of the most, like, successful business people or, like, movers and shakers in the world actually, like, have let their family life just completely fall apart. And to me, I'm like, okay, that's cool. They made all that money or they did those rad things. But I'm like, everything behind the scenes was like falling apart and their priorities were kind of off. So So it's like, I feel like you can have different versions of success, but like, you know, when I think of my highlight of the day, it usually has to do with someone else. Like, Mm. Not usually just me by myself, like, you know, rocking it. (laughs) It usually has to do with someone else. Like, you know, some, a moment shared or like just a funny thing or just whatever. I don't know. Dancing with my husband or something. (laughs) Yeah. Whatever it may be. I'm like, all my highlights usually have to do with someone else. And so I'm like, okay, then (laughs) truly like that's the thing that brings me the most joy consistently. And you know, there's other things that are really awesome. And I'm a very like ambitious, like go getter, like motivated human. But I just try not to allow that motivation for other things overpower my um, motivation or like my just my greatest callings. <laughs> Good. Gosh, I love that, that your highest of the day had to do with someone else. And that is so true. We were just talking about this a minute ago because, um, you know, I'm pregnant as well. And we're both kind of getting towards the end. But my first trimester was just gnarly. I mean, I was throwing up so much, so sick, the whole thing. And really half of my second was too. And my podcast team, when I came in, they're like, man, we're just so glad you're not puking in between all your podcasts and having to come back anymore. And I was just like, you know what? I am so glad too. And because that was so hard. But I said, you know what's cool though? I said, I I see like a lot of people on Instagram when they're pregnant, they're like, oh, like I've been throwing up. I've been laying in the bed for the past two months because I've been so sick. And I'm not saying that that's not sometimes called for. There are days that I laid in the bed too, but I think that what I am glad I didn't do is that for two months I didn't quit because I will say that even though I threw up four times a day every day for three months and that was brutal, at the same time, like those three months of my life are not just defined by sickness. Like when I look back at that, I think about the podcast that I got to do and the people that I got to hang out with and the trips that we went on. And yes, I spent a majority of the time running to the bathroom, throwing up, but I also had like highlights in the midst of all that I had like really sweet memories and you know got to be like oh I did all that while I was pregnant that's actually really cool and so you know I think that sometimes we think that like our me time is like you know the top priority and not to say that there isn't time to rest and there isn't time for that but at the same time I just think time with other people experiences that we get to have with our family they really are so much more fulfilling than just this me self-care time you know and I just I just think that's really cool that you said that That was such good advice I want to talk to you about you posted so when you posted about being pregnant you also posted like Joshua 1 9 about do not be afraid and I just think that that was so good because last night a friend and I were talking she's pregnant and just how many fears come up with pregnancy, how many fears come up with having kids. And it is a scary thing. And, and again, not everyone listening or moms. And I think this conversation goes so much broader than just to, to moms in the world. You've obviously had to overcome a lot of fear. You've gotten back in the water after hard things. You've overcome fear by public speaking. You've overcome fear by letting the public see your whole entire life. And you've overcome fear in motherhood. Oh, throughout all of this overcoming fear and continuing to walk into scary things, what do you think has really helped you the most when it comes to just the emotion of fear and the power of it? For sure. There's so many fears I'm continually overcoming along the way. And I mean, definitely just tuning into God's word. I mean, he has so many verses in the Bible about like, do not be afraid, do not fear, like trust in me. And obviously it's like a little easier said than done, but you can at least like look to God's word and like have that on your mind or pray it. And so, but yeah, and then even just like simple tools of like recognizing a lot of times our fears are just like things built up in our head. Yeah. And they're not necessarily truth. Like 
I think of when I first ent- was entering into motherhood, I was so scared. I was just like, I don't know what overcame me. Like, I finally could relate to my sister-in-law who struggled with the same thing and one of my best friends. And I was like, I thought they were so weird when, <laughs> when they were like first facing their first pregnancy. I'm like, why are you like, aren't you stoked? Yeah. <laughs> aren't you happy? <laughs> Um, and then I was like feeling all the same similar emotions that they were and just like other things along the way like am I um, doing good or is my marriage gonna like continually like thrive or make it like these different like big challenges in life um, that just bring the fear wall down and they almost can like blind you or stop you in your place or hold you back from just pursuing the good and beautiful things in life. And so to me, it's like, first, like look to God and see what he says. Second, like pray, talk to a friend, like just don't hold it all inside because I think when we hold it inside, we end up just kind of, um, it just like turns into this like mental block and you're just like stuck there. And so finding someone to talk to, um, and then two, like, you can replace your fear. Like I, I'm getting more and more into like mental, like mental patterns. And so recognizing our fears and maybe replacing them with either like scripture or something that's more honest or true. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if it's something really big, like getting help, it, I'm not saying you have to go to a therapist or anything, but going to someone who's really trustworthy and level headed, who can like look at your scenario and be like, Hey, like I see this on your life. And I think you're going to rock it. <laughs> like, yeah, they might yeah. have a completely different perspective. Um, but just kind of equipping that fear with tactics to kind of like overcome it. Yeah. I come from like, a professional athlete background. So I feel like there's always something you can do to better yourself towards whatever it is that you're working at. Mm-hmm. So whether it's mentally, physically, um, and just making sure you're supporting yourself across the board with health, so nutrition, sleep, mindset, um, faith over umbrellaing, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> and just kind of like tackling life from a whole because sometimes one area, maybe it's because you saw someone else really struggling or you yourself didn't have a good family life. So now you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be a mom. Am I mm-hmm. even going to be able to do this? Like, mm-hmm. like there's so many things that can contribute, but I don't know. I'm kind of rambling. No, I that's don't know. so good. It's so good. And it's so true because I think you really do have to have both of those things, all of those things. It's a, it's a whole thing. You have to have faith, obviously you got to put God's word in, in, in the rightful place and know his word and know who he is. And that certainly will help you overcome fear. But at the same time, there's a lot of practical things you can do to not be afraid too. like truly what you eat does matter. The working out, being healthy, staying active, um, not watching crime shows. If you're terrified of things, don't listen to podcasts that are scary, like practicality people, you know, I mean, even for me, I've shared this before that um like whenever I get anxiety like a lot of times if I just will run my hands under warm water it literally calms my body down because when I'm cold I get shaky which mimics what used to look like panic attacks for me and so there's just practical things too of like hey this is making me scared I'm gonna stop watching it or I know that if I stay up super late and don't get a lot of sleep I will feel more anxious or I probably shouldn't drink four cold brews today and not eat a single thing because that will make me super anxious too like there are some super practical things that actually do make you have anxiety and there's also really a huge part of faith that you have to have when it comes into just fear of life because there are scary things that are gonna happen in life like I mentioned um parenting is just one aspect that brings a lot of fear into your life pregnancy can bring fear into your life but so does just waking up and living life in the world that we live in so is driving your car to work so is surfing and starting new sports and starting new jobs and you know there's all kinds of things and so 
I just think that it is an important thing to actually get a hold of, though, and not just say, oh, well, everyone's afraid. I'm just going to live in it. It's like, no, like the Bible does say do not fear, but it says do not fear attached to a promise of for I will be with you, for God will be with you, that he's got you. And so that's why you can walk through life um, and not be drowning in fear and not be a slave to fear. And so I love what you said. I think it's so good. And, you know, I don't think that's a ramble. I think fear is a messy topic, and I think you can go a lot of different directions directions with how you begin to overcome fear. I wrote a book called Live Fearless years ago, and I'm always like, man, I feel like I could have just said so much more in that book, but that's a never-ending book. I mean, to live fearless is a never-ending story, a never-ending motto. No one's fearless. Like, yep. to set that expectation completely to be fearless, like, our human nature is to, like, sin and do wrong and yeah. to... Um, have fears and that's why we need god that's why we need his grace on our life to carry us through those moments when we struggle or we doubt or we live without faith um he's like trying to pull us back and be like hey like i have already overcome all the challenges in the world on your behalf by dying on the cross and so we have this ultimate hope that Mm -hmm. carries us through those times of like fear and distrust or you know sometimes there's scenarios too that are genuinely scary and really hard and so I wouldn't want to underestimate that like it's probably going to be something you're going to have to work through but again don't do it alone because if you're doing it alone it might just not turn out so good but I love this little quote I had to pull it up on my phone real quick it's like for me I'm like I think of my life and I'm like if the fear of failure like you know so many of us fear failure if the fear of failure wins we may never surprise ourselves and like Mm. I could have been so scared of sharks or I could have been so scared of you know just being in the ocean and surfing and I did actually have fears that I wouldn't be able to surf that was probably like one of my biggest fear (laughs) because I'm like that much of a mermaid (laughs) and (laughs) So, but I was willing to try and put myself out there and do something that I didn't know of anyone else who had done that. Like this was unknown territories. And so, but I'm so glad I was willing to try and keep going and like getting back on my board. And there was some days that were so hard and so awful and some days still to this day. Um, But like, there's always those good moments too. And these moments like joy and like, overcoming and so I even like the other conversation I had with Nick voice a chick I yeah. never saw his yeah. name. <laughs> my Nick he has like no limbs he's super rad like positive like god-fearing man <laughs> and he always just he hinted at like think of all the things you've already overcome in your life when you're in that immediate like trial or situation that's just feeling really hard mm. and not like allowing that immediate moment to build up so much in your head that you're like having a panic but like whoa I've already overcome so much um or maybe some of the like more recent things and just just praying on that and like knowing like Lord you've already provided for me so help me to like move forward in Mm -hmm. faith so gosh that's so good (laughs) There's so much in life that can hold us back, but yep. there's so much we can do. And there's so like we, when, especially when you have like a God who has overcome it all, like, gosh, you That's have good. like the biggest head start over most of society. That's so good. That's so true. My mom would always say to me, you know, Sadie, you can have a million excuses as to why you're not going to do something, but fear can never be the reason why you don't do something. That is never going to be a valid excuse. And I think that's so true because I think sometimes people think, oh, if I feel afraid, then I must not be supposed to do it or something. It's like, no, like fear is going to be a natural thing because some things are genuinely scary. But actually, like it's a beautiful thing to to step into things afraid and to overcome them. And that does bring that confidence. It does bring that joy. It shows you what you're capable of doing. It shows you the power of God through your life. It keeps you dependent on Him. And so I love that. And I just think it's so awesome that you said like 
you know, you were so scared that you might not get to surf again. That might have been your number one fear. But like you worked your butt off. And then not only did you surf again, but like you surfed like really dang good. Like you have like crushed it and continued to just succeed in that. And so take me back to just like what made you fall in love with surfing in the first place? How did you even get into it? And just take us back to that initial passion that started. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Hawaii, and my whole family surfed. My mom and dad moved from um, New Jersey and California to surf in Hawaii. Wow. So it was kind of like I was born into a surf family, and I just um, ran with the family passion, but it genuinely became my own pretty fast and pretty young. And then I got really competitive, and then after I lost my arm, it was kind of more just about, like, getting back on my board and like not wanting to lose this passion of mine. And then I learned to surf with one arm and then I just kept competing. And I think that was also like just wanting normal life and not wanting like, you know, this to like just stop me (laughs) in my tracks. So started even competing like less than six months later. And then I ended up winning a national title like two years later And then I kind of went pro after that. I didn't have like an insane, like competitive professional career, but I had some really awesome highlights. I've taken down a few world champs, which was really fun and really cool. (laughs) Um, cool. It kind of like pushed female surfing in a lot of ways. Um, I have a documentary, it's called Unstoppable, if you guys want to see the whole. It's focused more on like my surf career journey and like, when I got married and then when I had my first child. So you kind of see some of these fears that we're talking about in that, in that film. But that was like one of the funnest times of my life. Like, and some of my greatest successes in surfing were after I had my first child and with the help of my husband and his support and like just making certain choices along the way, like I was still able to kind of run with my career. Um, And now that I'm having my fourth child, like I'm still surfing at a professional level, but I'm probably going to wind down a bit and like just focus on the fam and go surf with my children. My seven year old, my seven year old surfs now and he loves it. So I'm like, yes, mom dreams coming true. That's so fun. Oh my gosh. You're so cool. Like just to be like, Oh yeah, you know, I'm a fourth child and I'm, and I'm still serving at a professional level. I'm like, that is like such a cool statement that you just said. So props, like, I mean, I just think it's awesome. And, you know, you can't, people, I think, see people online sometimes and they just think that p- things just happen for them and things just don't just happen. I mean, you work so hard to be able to say, I'm having my fourth child and I'm still surfing at a professional level. That's years and years and years of hard work and dedication. And I do feel like sometimes this generation struggles with the idea of hard work. It's like, sometimes people are like, I want the accomplishment, I want the title of it, I want the success of it, but I don't wanna work hard to get there. And so I just, from from you who has worked tremendously hard in your life and seen a long time career, uh, what have you learned about just hard work? And if you would say something to the generation coming up uh, about just hard work, because I think it's a beautiful thing. And I think sometimes we just lose the art and the respect for what it takes to accomplish something as massive as some of the things that you're sharing. Yeah, there's a few things in my childhood that I feel like taught me hard work. Um, One and two, my mom and dad, (laughs) they worked so hard and we were for sure not wealthy. Like we were very simple living, um, like kind of barely getting by. My dad was usually working like two to three jobs and Hawaii is one of the most expensive places to live. So it was just a lot. And just seeing him dedicate so much to our family and even my mom too. And so they taught me a lot, like I think I just saw that. I saw that even my dad, he's like retired, but he's like working harder than ever. Like he's such a like hardworking man. Um, But then my passion for surfing, like that really drove my like hard work ethic. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of respect for sport because I feel like sport can teach you so much. So maybe you don't have a sport, but I think finding something that you have to push towards, like maybe you get into like a marathon running thing or something like that, or like getting in the gym and pushing like 10 minutes longer than you want to, like just mentally, like I think the physical 
translates to the mental a lot. So now fast forward, like I'm running my own businesses and I'm doing different things um, that I'm passionate about um, beyond my family, faith and surf. And um, I see how that work ethic carries over into these other areas that I'm not as like deeply passionate about. Like I am passionate about them. Otherwise I wouldn't be doing them. But, like, they can't compare to, like, family and surf. (laughs) Like, those, the passion and drive there comes really natural. But just finding your ability to be, like, okay, well, one, just, like, be respectable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, two, like, finding things that get you excited to wake up each day. Like, I feel like we spend so much time scrolling on our phone or watching TV. I'm at the point in my life where... You know, I know I'm not your normal human, but, like, I don't even watch TV. Like, I maybe watch, like, an hour or two a month, if that. It's awesome. Um, awesome. I'm just, like, busy, and I have other things that I'm passionate about. And then I also want to serve my family well, so I have to go to bed. I have to go to bed on time or else I'm kind of, like, grumpy the next day. (laughs) So, yeah, or I'm getting work done right after I put my children to sleep, but... Um, just finding things that get you excited to live for and like move and shake and do and go. Um, and I feel like our conversation is going in a total different direction because on one hand, I'm like, slow down, like enjoy life, like love your people well. But I'm also like, you want to find things that get you driven and moving forward and doing something and like excited to wake up and like you know, things that motivate you to put your phone down or turn the TV off um, and just create more in life. I like the idea of like consuming less, creating more. I think it's so cool about what you just said is you said the conversation is going in a bit of a different direction, but I actually think that everything you're saying is consistent and true because I think that some people do think that slowing down and being intentional with your family literally means like not doing anything, right? Uh, But I I don't think that that's true. I think that there are things that need to take a back burner and those are the things that are not as important. You know, it's like, it's the watching TV time. It's the scrolling time. It's the things that busify us but are not fruitful. You know, they, it's like, they're the things that um, are really just kind of numbing us, right? And, and and replacing that with things that might be busier, but they're more fruitful. There's more meaning behind them. There's more purpose behind them. And in doing that, I feel like I, I had this moment one time where I was skiing down a mountain and I had been in a really busy season of my life and I just felt like so much chaos was going on. I just felt like everything was going super fast. And I was skiing down the mountain and it was just beautiful Lake Tahoe. And I always feel like God just speaks really clearly to me whenever I'm like in nature like that, especially like skiing because I'm not distracted by anything. I'm just going down. And I literally felt like, and I've never heard the Lord audibly speak, but it was one of those just like wake you up kind of moments where I felt like the Lord said, notice how fast you're going, but how much peace you feel. And it was such a cool like visual for me that like I was going fast down this mountain, but I like had so much peace. And I realized that you can be going hard in a season and still carry peace and still carry a rest if you're doing things that matter, if you're doing things that are fulfilling, if you're doing things that are fruitful. And at the very same time, you can be going just as fast, but doing things that aren't really in your lane to do, doing things that are numbing, doing things that aren't fruitful, and be an anxious wreck, feel so chaotic, feel so stressed. And that's not to say that sometimes you're going to feel stressed and anxious even when you're doing the right thing because things just get chaotic sometimes. But I do think that there is a difference and that you can be busy and feel peace um, because you're busy with things that matter. And so I actually think that this conversation led into a super cool place because I think people do get confused on what those things look like. And I actually had this quote that you had written down to talk about and you just said it find a passion that gets you off social media the couch and gets you pumped for life I was like that's so good I mean truly like sometimes you really just you have to ask yourself like what am I passionate about and you just have to go 
do it. Go start doing it. And those things that make you excited to wake up or make you um, work hard towards something are the things that make life so fun and so fulfilling. So I love it. Um, I do want to talk to you about Unstoppable because I watched the documentary. It was awesome. But also just the overall message of Unstoppable. What I love about you is you're living all these things, but at the same time you're living them. You are teaching them to other people. You're doing all kinds of things to help people get the message that you're living. And so just just tell us a little bit about that unstoppable message and some of the things that you're doing to just help people live an unstoppable life. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to quickly touch on too, like, uh, I feel like I didn't fully understand the peace of God until like my later adult life or early, like later twenties, early thirties. And it's like the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind. I feel like there's so much in the world that can steal from our peace. But when we have our eyes pointed towards the God of all creation and his word in particular, then when the chaos hits, we're like, there's still this like underlying peace that's, Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe you're feeling stressed out or maybe you're just like, it's still a hard time, but there's that like underlying peace and hope that carries you through that. And so I just want to encourage your listeners, like, you can choose how you view the world and you can prepare yourself for those moments of chaos so that when the craziness hits the fan, (laughs) you you can be unstoppable. And to me, being unstoppable is not about being perfect and having it together at each and every moment of every day, but it's just like getting back up and continuing to go when the hardest moments of your life hit, when those, like crazy like shark attack moments happen and you're like I can't believe this happened to me like what in the world that was not my plan God (laughs) what are you doing and but like God's plan is so much greater than ours and we can look to him to be our peace and our strength through all the hardship and the challenges or even the moments of like whoa I realize I blew it like maybe sometimes the hardships like looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, why did I make such a poor choice? Yeah. Like God's grace is sufficient for us and he wants us to move forward with him and just keep paddling, keep going. Like great. I I always use surf analogies because I'm a surfer, but like sometimes you go out surfing and the ocean just feels like it's against you and you're paddling, paddling, paddling and your muscles are burning. Your mind is like, I'm so over this. But um, there's like another good wave to be had. So you just push through Mm -hmm. and you keep going. And so so I just hope that anyone here today who's like going through that thick season that just feels really hard or maybe you feel aimless, like just challenge yourself, like step outside of your comfort zone, like try new things until you find something that really gets you excited. Do it with a friend or family member. You can make it like that much more meaningful and Um, I have a little mentorship program with moms and daughters, and I've been encouraging the girls, like, go with your mom and try something new every month until you find something that's, like, just captures your heart or captures, like, your passion place. And so find something that just gets you excited and just know that you can overcome. Like, there's so much um, that we can do to, like, keep moving forward and I think the enemy, Satan, wants to steal from us and hold us back and make us think we're not enough or Mm -hmm. we don't have what it takes to keep going or those fears, like those fears are usually coming from not God. (laughs) Yeah. And so recognizing the lies that are building up inside of us and saying no to them and looking to the truth of God and the beautiful things in life that God has placed before us. So. Good. Come on. You're so inspirational. And I think everything you said is so good. But what's so cool about it is it's like you can trust your voice. You know, everything that you're saying, you personally live through. Everything you're saying, you personally experience and work through. And, um, you know, it's one thing for someone to get up and like say something encouraging and to be like, oh, that's a nice thought. But I don't know if that's true. But to hear you say some of these things and to be like, whoa, like that's so inspiring because. A lot of what you're saying is one, so true because it's rooted in scripture. And then two, it's true because it's your personal experience and what you've literally learned through um, just years of working through fears, pushing through waves, 
going through the fatigues of life, but waiting and seeing what's coming next and then like starting the things that you started. And so I just think that's incredibly inspiring to so many people listening and such a good word for everyone listening that like what she's saying is not just like good advice pulled out from just the wind. Like this is like true real life things that she's experienced and that has made her life as fruitful as it is. And just as I love how you say as rad as it is, because it's true. Like these things are real. These things are good. Such good advice. Uh, I want to ask you about you and your husband because y'all are just so cute and y'all have just a great family. And um, literally this morning as I was talking to my husband about interviewing you, one of the first questions he asked is like, oh, how did her and her husband meet? And I was like, actually, I can't remember. I'm going to ask her that because we love a good meeting story on the Well That's Good podcast. So how did you meet your husband? Yeah, so Adam and I met out here in Kauai. He grew up in Kansas, so super different backgrounds and upbringings. He, uh, His family super bad, though. And our friends, we had mutual friends. He had moved out here to help start a young life um, ministry. Oh, cool. He was in like the gnarliest part of the island. So just thrown into the thick of like Hawaii culture, the side that most people don't see. And but like he was just so loved over there. So it was pretty cool. Like when I met him, he understood Hawaii and like he just was already in the thick of the culture out here. And so you know, I didn't have to like show him those sort of things or help him understand those things. So that was kind of cool. But anyway, we got set up on a blind date, but we just met up at the beach, you know, (laughs) super casual. But um, we had a few other friends around, but there was a cliff jump and I hadn't done it, even though like I totally should have done this cliff jump already because everyone, (laughs) everyone in their late teens or early adults has definitely like jumped this cliff unless you're just super scared of heights. (laughs) Um, and I'm kind of like, I don't love heights, but we went and did it and it was just him and I, and that was just like the start of adventuring together and kind of hit it off. And, um, that was in May and then we were engaged like the next April and then we got married the next, the August after. That's so sweet. Yeah. I just like feel like he's such a gift from God. Like I had fears of finding a husband, (laughs) Like in that's my, another like, classic fear. Yeah, my late teen, like young adult life, like I hadn't really dated anyone. I like barely dabbled a date with this one guy, and then, but otherwise, I was just like super fresh. Like I was pretty like um, innocent, or like I didn't know what anything was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anyone knows what I'm even talking about right now. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There's a lot of people out there who are like, that's me. Yeah. Like I, yeah. And I waited for marriage to like be intimate with my husband. And that was super beautiful and like totally worth the wait and just such a blessing for our marriage. Um, And just like the overall like long term relationship we're in. And we're almost up on 10 years. So wow. cool. um, there's definitely been some rough patches. But at the end of the day, like, I feel like God's grace has definitely like worked in our marriage and we're stronger than ever now. And I love being a parent with my husband. Like we're very much like a dynamic duo team. We're, like he was there like as my like husband coaching birthing partner. That's <laughs> like, awesome. It's like class, like husband coached birthing. <laughs> and so that like really brought us together in a super cool way. Wow. And um, so yeah, it's just been so cool to like share life with someone so special and just like how I see how we complement each other. We're super teaming and um, we've grown so much together and yeah, I just love him and I'm so thankful for him. And so, yeah, don't be fearful, girls, but also put yourself out there and don't just like sit around. Like, I feel like there's like this, like, a, like balancing act of like putting mm-hmm. yourself out there. Like, you know, ask people like, hey, do you know anyone who like might suit me? Like, I'm all for like getting set up. Like, yes, <laughs> like, that's how I met my guy. So, um, that's yeah, so good. I mean, it's so true. You got to put yourself out there. uh, One 
mentor of ours, Bianca Oltoff. She's hilarious. She's been on this podcast before, but she told my friend, uh, my friend was just kind of like, you know, telling her like, oh, I'm just like waiting on my husband. She said, girl, I'm going to tell you what my sister told me. You keep waiting on your husband, you could be waiting on the mailman because that's the only man showing up at your house. And she was like, yes, wait. But at the same time, like be active in your waiting. Like, you know, show up. Be. I always think like, you know, some people... Um, I mean, and we're all about guy pursuing, yes, beautiful. But at the same time, like I always say, give them confidence to pursue you. Like, like respond to their text, you know, like classic, like easy things, like practical, respond to their text, show them that you care, be sweet to them, flirt with them, like let them know, like, hey, you're doing a great job pursuing. Like, I just think that sometimes we're a little bit too like, we're waiting, we, we need to be pursued and all these things. It's like, yes, be pursued. Yes, wait, but at the same time, like show up you know put yourself out there and so I love that that's so good so speaking of adventures with your husband I hear that y'all are maybe in the works or just starting a podcast tell us about that it's super exciting yeah so Adam and I are gonna start a podcast I just feel like there's so much I want to share and encourage people with and I've kind of been like a little burn out on social media in that like I feel like you can only go so far there or it's just like a snippet of like a conversation and most people are so fast at scrolling that they don't even like hear what you say yep (laughs) so yeah we're hoping to just bring more encouragement out there and I would say it's gonna be like focused on overcoming like life's challenges but from like health um faith uh mindset like all the things that I'm just like passionate about kind of a lot of what we talked about today Um, And doing it together with my husband, him and I um, are just so pumped to like be together and like, you know, just put more goodness out there. It's awesome. (laughs) I love it. I'm so excited for y'all and I'm excited to listen. And I feel the same way. Like I've been just kind of burnt out on social media as well. And honestly, I've been taking this year off, like haven't been on since January. My team's been helping post. Um, But I've been like loving podcasting and I've been doing it for almost five years now. And it's just been like the biggest blessing because you're so right. Like you can go so much deeper than you can on social media. And even if you put like an awesome, you know, message out there, people are probably only going to listen to the first, you know, 60 seconds or until they have to click, they're probably not going to click, you know? And it's like, you know, there's beauty to social media. I'm all for the beauty that is behind social media as far as like the good things that can happen and how God can use the platform to reach a lot of people and connect people. But I also think that it is a very limited space and the algorithms whack and you cannot control a lot. But with podcasting, like you have this freedom to just have conversation. And it really, I have seen like the impact of this podcast be so huge. And it's been cool. Like people used to come up to me and be like, oh, I saw you on Duck Dynasty or I saw you on Dancing with Stars. And it was, oh, I follow you on Instagram. And now it's, I listen to your podcast. And that's That's been like the best change, like the best shift because I'm like, these are the conversations that matter. Like these are the kind of things that have been like impactful and I've seen just like bless people's lives. So I know that y'all's podcast is going to do the same and I'm so excited for y'all. And then also I hear that you're wanting to gift uh, someone listening to the podcast with one of your resources. Can you tell us about that? Okay, so I'm going to give someone one of my um, unstoppable journals. So it's just a simple journal, nothing special to it. But with it, I'm also going to give you my whole unstoppable life courses. So it's like a 12 part course series um, that we haven't really been pushing much. But I just like, yeah, it's, it will help you in so many rad ways. We talk about mindset, health, um, there's some fitness mixed in there That's and awesome. a bunch of like faith, like everything under the sun. Um, but yeah, so that's so sweet. Well, y'all, that will be in the show notes for those listening. And um, Bethany, you're awesome. I mean, this just exceeded my expectations for having you on the podcast. And I'm just so thankful to have a conversation with you. And I think it's so cool because, you know, I've watched from afar so much of your life. I saw the movie. I saw the documentary. I followed you on Instagram. But to get to talk to you for almost an hour and just hear your heart and see how genuine you really are, um, it just makes my heart so happy. And I think that I love the verse where it says the godly walk with integrity and you just have so much integrity to your life and you have stayed so faithful to 
just the things that you believe and I know that's because you really believe them it's because those are your core things and that has bled through in everything you've done and I'm thankful to have someone like you to look up to to be a friend to and just to have in the the light you know right now because the world can be dark but you're such a light and just super thankful for you and thank you so much for being on the what that's good podcast thanks Sadie